hello and welcome to this episode of Retro Game Living Room. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at a VHS based gaming system that you've probably never heard of before. You're probably familiar with Action Max. You may even know about the Captain Power interactive game series of toys. But you might not be familiar with this one. I will tell you that I've already shot the part where I unbox it and I play it and I comment on it. Straight up, spoiler, this is the weirdest gaming experience I've ever had in my life. The subject of this episode is Tiger Electronics Battle Vision that was released in 1994. Stick around. This is a monster box for a monster game system. It tells us finally the TV is battling you back, but this is not the first time the TV has battled back against real players. It says it a lot. Finally, the television is battling you back and only you can stop it with Battle Vision. The first fully interactive action playset. The first fully interactive action playset. Taking a look at the side of the box, we see some of the stuff that is part of the game. Parts of the base, gun turrets, radar, a long range rocket launcher. And a fully integrated control panel, including LCD. So that's like the power system of this console. We see right here, there is a Toys R Us price tag on it. It's upside down. Let's flip that around. And you can see that at some point, someone paid $69.99 for this system. This probably isn't a bad price. Looking at the side of the box, it tells us again, this is the first fully interactive action play set. And it actually interacts with its own VHS tape. One thing that we haven't seen here on this on this box that we're seeing now is uh, the dome, which we'll talk about in gameplay, but it's basically one of the main objectives is to prevent this from getting all blowed up in bad kind of ways. Looking at the back of the box, we can see a lot of what comes with the game. We, got, we can see the VHS, it's rocket launcher, here's the computer and the TV sensor, here's the dome so when it's broken it blows open, there are missiles, that actually shoot on two of the torrents and the rest of them are automated. It says includes more than 60 battle and command sound effects. I can tell you that it has a lot and including a lot of talking and it's extremely obnoxious, much more than you can imagine. Now that we've taken a look at the box, let's get this sucker open. Normally I like to be behind the camera while I'm doing an unboxing, but this thing is so huge that I'm not sure I can be and, and watch every and you be, be able to watch everything come out. There's a lot of inner packaging in this system. A lot of stuff to open. Even just pulling this out, man, it's a lot of effort. Look, look how huge and monstrous this box is. That's the main base. There's even more parts in the box that are not in containers. And then we have, you know, a Nerf dart. I'm going to disassemble this, get this all unpackaged for you, and then we're going to take a look at putting it together. Hi. I just want to show you the instructions here. Little pamphlet. Folds open. And, and, and look at this. I feel like I got the blueprints of the damn Death Star. Oh. This is going to be a lot of assembly.
this took me a really, really long time. So you just saw a little glimpse of it. But this was ridiculously frustrating and a pain in the ass. Now that we have it together, let's play this stupid thing on TV. <laughs> Video is starting, so I'm going to turn on the console. Vision, vision one, doom on you. We're ready for action. Okay, so it's telling me which gun to use. So the guns are used by pressing them down. So it says use number four, which is this one, which actually shoot stuff. Essentially, this is an overcomplicated version of Simon. As I'm doing this, I see my score counter going up. So my score is now 108,500 points, which just seems like a whole lot. So now it's also showing me I have three red lights here. And I'm pretty sure that means, you know, not good. This guy hit a lot, it's game over. What this was showing me here is the lights are showing me how much ammo I have left. So I can always turn this off and switch it back on and pick up where I just died. Okay, so all my ammo is full again. The cartoon itself and the story are terrible, which is actually a good thing because the computer talking would be driving me crazy if I were actually trying to watch the movie. I don't know what good these doors are while you're playing the game. Or this thing here that's... Maybe I'm just gonna like have a guy. I have no idea. Station four. Missile. Twenty five hundred points. Oh, they said the name of the video right in the video. See now, these guys got nailed and they popped up. That was kind of cool. See now, as I make the shots, the score increases. Okay, that was just me. I I think that's this guy. Plasma cannon. Laser cannon. Fire. So now I have 7,500 points. Released in 1994, the Battle Vision game system is not the first time we as consumers have seen a VHS-based video game system interact with the TV. One that you might know of very well is the Action Max game system, something that this channel will eventually uh, be doing a review on. This is the most popular and well-known of the series of the various VHS-based consoles that came out in the 80s. Battle Vision wasn't released until 1994, but it uses a totally different technology than the Action Max does. The Action Max relies on flashing lights on the screen in order for its gun to detect the signal. With Battle Vision, this is using a different technology called VEAL, which stands for Video Encoded Invisible Light. So VEAL is actually a transmission that comes from the video and can be received by the receiver 
over here. Video encoded invisible light, or VL, is a way that data is transmitted steganographically through other images or videos. The company that created this actually wasn't Tiger. It was a company called Interactive Systems, or ISI, that was based in Oregon, that was founded by a man named Ted Koppler in 1985. This is the company, this company started producing veal based toys way back in the 80s. And this is not the first one, but it's one of the first ones to really have any consumer success. According to the Veal website, the first use of Veal technology appeared in a handheld toy for the 1987 cartoon Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs, though I have not been able to confirm that this actually exists anywhere. However, I take that with a bit of grain of salt because their website also states that VL technology wasn't available to consumers until 2004, but we know for a fact that it was available at least a decade earlier because Battlevision came out in 1994. The website also cites toys for the cartoon series, The Batman, that use VL technology, and these totally do exist. I found examples on eBay and on Amazon.com and in articles. So there was at least a Batmobile made and a handheld video game. Also in 2004, Tiger released another VL technology enhanced product called Toby Terrier. Toby Terrier is a toy dog that went with the Toby Terrier TV series. VHS tapes just for the toy were also sold and the dog took cartridges. So VHS tapes that were sold separately for Toby Terrier came with cartridges that presumably reprogrammed the dog with different phrases. This probably explains why Battle Vision has a cartridge slot, even though I can find no evidence that a cartridge was released for it. In fact, I can find no evidence that any other game other than Doom on You and the two episodes that it contains even exist. The back of the box for Doom on You, the Battle Vision packing game, contains an advertisement for another quote action tape to play on Battle Vision. This one called Out to Launch. <laughs> However, and this almost never happens, a Google search returns exactly zero results. So it's my hypothesis that this game and other additional games that would have utilized the cartridge slot were never ever released and that Doom On You and the second mission it contains are the only two games you can play on Battle Vision. This red dot indicator here indicates that it's actually receiving the, 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 the message from the TV. So my red dot, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Uh-oh, see I got, I got killed again by not paying attention. If I move this out of the way, when it's on, see, now it's receiving the signal from the TV. If I turn it, and if I tilt it up, see now it's not. Now it's not. Now it is. So it's got like a, it's got a range on it where it can actually be effective in detecting the signal from the TV. And there just went another one of my gun torrents. I'm gonna stop it there and start putting this base back together again. This is literally the strangest gaming experience I've ever had. So now, is it a video game? Well, it plays a video and it's a game. So it's similar to other VHS based consoles that I haven't taken a look at on this channel, but that we've shown throughout this video, like Action Max, for example, um, also like Captain Power. So VHS, the idea of interacting with a VHS or video content wasn't something that was new when this came out in 1994. It had been around for a decade. The idea had been around in a decade for that point and so had the technology. This was a huge pain in the ass to put together. It is just a massive thing. It's, it's, it, it's, it, it's freaking huge. And it's not something that I find to be very fun as, you know, a mid thirties game collector. If I were, you know, mid to early teens, 
I might have really liked this in 1994. You know, back then I was playing Genesis. I, I, you know what? I still really wasn't into toy stuff anymore then. So I would say, you know, if I were, you know, this is like the 10 year old range kind of a, kind of a toy. And it, it's just not good. It doesn't hold up. I wouldn't recommend it for anything beyond collecting purposes. As strange as it is and as neat as it is to experience once, they're not easy to find that are a complete set. Like I said, it's not very fun. The extra games are difficult to come by, so you're most likely going to be stuck with Doom on You, which is just the just the one packing game. So overall, there's some neat ideas here, but it's just not great. No! Just I'm dead! I can see we'll have to improve on our next. Uh,